This is what piracy looks like in the 21st century. You won't find any romantic swashbucklers here. These are desperate men. They're armed and dangerous, ready to attack just about any commercial vessel they can find. The bigger, the better. They hijack freighters like these, hold the crews hostage, and demand huge ransoms. The problem runs rampant from the Gulf of Aden, south along the coast of East Africa, and far out into the Indian Ocean. That's where pirates from war-torn Somalia prowl the sea in small boats, hoping to hit it very big. An international armada is intent on stopping them. One of those ships is the Lebeccio, an Italian Navy frigate, part of a 10-ship European Union task force called Operation Atalanta. I meet the Lebeccio in the Tanzanian capital and port city of Dar es Salaam. It's the departure point for a two-week journey up the coast of Africa for an extended look at the EU's efforts to stop piracy. So we've just left the dock in Dar es Salaam and the mission has already begun. Security is very tight, even here in the harbor. But as soon as we get out past the headlands here, we are gonna be out in the open ocean and on patrol. As soon as the ship leaves the dock, sentries go on high alert, keeping watch for anything that could pose a threat. Terrorism is a risk even in the harbor. Passing by cargo ships lined up to the horizon, it's easy to see why pirates are so active in this part of the world. It is a target-rich environment. As we head out to sea, the Lebeccio's commanding officer, 39-year-old Antonio Galiuto, reminds the crew of its prime directive, something he later repeats for me. To stop, disrupt, and prevent any act of piracy and robbery at sea between the Gulf of Aden and the Indian Ocean, what we call the Somali Basin. It's a critical mission, given the river of commerce flowing through this region, nearly 20% of all trade in and out of Europe. Each morning begins with assembly. Buongiorno, riposo. The Lebeccio and her crew of 225 men and women are nearing the end of a four-month deployment. During this time, they've escorted ships carrying food aid to Somalia, gathered intelligence information about pirate activities, and they've patrolled the seas, trying to ensure the safety of seafarers of all sorts, from big merchant vessels to small fishing boats called dhows. Prego. Prego. The Combat Operations Center, or COC, is the heart of the ship. I sit in on one of the frequent briefings, where the officers give Commander Galiuto updates on everything. From ship supplies and the weather forecast, to task force activity and pirate action in the area, a lot of this is classified. Not much to report today. Grazie. Buona giornata. But that will change because Somali pirates have been expanding their operations. They used to attack the, the merchant vessel transiting very close to the Somali coastline. Now they go and reach and attack the, the merchant vessels and the fishing vessels down to the area in front of Kenya and Tanzania and more south. To do that, they have changed their tactics. Not only do they use small, high-powered boats to chase down and clamber on board large container ships, but now they also launch attacks from so-called mother vessels, often a ship they've hijacked to use as a supply base on the high seas. The pirate attack groups are composed by a big vessel and some small and fast 
boats. They can stay for about three or four weeks at sea, trying to intercept the traffic lanes and get some merchant vessel. To try to prevent attacks, the Lebechio's two helicopters fly reconnaissance and surveillance missions every day. We go where the, the ship cannot go, so we have the eyes from the ship. The information gathered during these flights is critical to the mission. So you have to report uh, uh, as much as you can see, but you have to sure about you, you, what you are, are seeing. Okay, so it's important not to make mistakes. One of the choppers, nicknamed Muttley, is equipped with a high-powered infrared camera. I go for a flight with Lieutenants Ricardo Guatemagma and Dario Hedayati. So we've just taken off from the five years of the Beggio, and you can see cargo ships in every direction. This is one of the busiest shipping corridors in the world. Some shipping companies have started to take their own steps to stop the pirates fortifying their ships with defenses like water cannons and barbed wire to keep the pirates from climbing on board. They're also building armored safe rooms called citadels where the crew can lock themselves in and remain in control of their ship. But looking down at these gigantic vessels, the situation still seems a bit unreal. It's hard to believe that a tiny pirate skiff could threaten a ship so large, but that's what happens here. The pilots say the pirates have gotten bolder. Instead of running, they've started trying to scare off the military forces in the area. Dario, when you were flying over a suspect pirate ship before, you were fired on with an RPG, right? What happened? Uh, I guess that uh, they just want to, you know, give us a warning, you know, to let them go. And do you think they're taking advantage of the rules of engagement? They know you're not going to fire back? Uh, when you get an hijack vessel, uh, the point is that you have best hostage aboard. Your first priority is the safety of the hostages. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Shooting back at the pirates could lead to hostages getting killed, so Dario and Ricardo would have to hold their fire. Dangerous flights are nothing new for them. Both have flown combat missions in Afghanistan. But they say it's still always a relief to locate their floating landing pad, safely home once again after more than 200 hours of flight during this four-month operation. Despite bursts of action, during the long hours in between, life at sea can get monotonous. But the crew of the Lebeccio does its best to maintain that Italian dolce vita. That means pasta catching soccer games on satellite TV. Even an espresso and gelato bar that's open almost 24 hours a day. But as we travel up the African coastline, the pace of operations aboard the Libeccio will intensify. So this is one of the main pieces of navigational equipment here on the Libeccio. Unfortunately, I cannot bring the camera in here to show you exactly what I'm looking at because a lot of it is classified. But what I can say is that we're just now crossing from Kenyan waters really into Somali waters. Later, we'll be getting closer to shore where it'll be easier to send the helicopters out to fly over pirate camps. By monitoring activity on land, Commander Galiuto is trying to predict when and where pirate groups might try to attack and try to stop them before they even leave shore. We just send the, our helicopter and let them know that we are here. If they realize that the Navy ship is close to uh, their target, well, they think it twice before they, uh, they attack. Just as the Libeccio shares all its intel with the entire task force fleet, this morning's briefing alerts the Libeccio to the actions of the other ships in the flotilla. Disrupting pirate activities which are going on all around us, all the time. It's a chess match, the piece is always in motion. A dangerous game, especially for those working the front lines. 
We always have to stay alert and uh, always watch with camera, with eyes, until you are not sure that uh, is, uh, uh, the guys are handling a fishing net. You have to think they are uh, handling a weapon. We're about 10 miles off the Somali coast, and off on the horizon, you can see two merchant cargo vessels that have been hijacked. The helicopter of the Lebecho is on its way back. It's done a surveillance mission, flown over the two ships. All we know right now is that they've been hijacked and that the crews are being held hostage. We're hoping to learn more when the chopper returns. Launched 29 years ago, the Lebecho is a warship built for another era. It was designed during the height of the Cold War to operate as an anti-submarine frigate. It's armed to the teeth with torpedoes, a guided missile launcher, and a huge long-range anti-ship cannon. Today, it seems unlikely these weapons will ever be used. Una for assets would will rarely use their weapons against pirates. Flying his choppers over those two hijacked ships anchored near shore, Commander Galiuto was simply trying to keep his eye on the situation. Rescue missions are too risky. Anytime we pass in the vicinity of this camp, we have to count them and we have to, to, well, to control them if they are still there or they are involved in any other logistic activity. And some of those ships have been there for months. For sure we know that, that those two vessels uh, are hijacked, so they have crew members hijacked on board, hostages. We know exactly what we can do and what we have to do, and we have a clear perception of what we consider a collateral damage and what we have to avoid. The goal is to end these standoffs without bloodshed, which usually means the ship owners negotiate with the pirates and pay a ransom, which can run into the millions of dollars. As of November, Somali pirates were holding 22 hijacked ships with people held hostage on board, waiting for their ordeals to end. With limited opportunities for real action, the crew finds ways to stay occupied. They play combat video games, and they drill regularly, staying sharp for the real thing. The ship's explosives team practices identifying and detonating wayward bombs. And the small unit of Italian Marines assigned to the Lebeccio works on boarding maneuvers. Chief Petty Officer Per Luigi De Rosa is the head of the Marine team. We are professionals, so this is the activity that we do every day. There is no fear when we do this action. They say their motto is a good-natured way to let their adversaries know they're serious. Noi siamo più pirati di voi. More pirates than the pirates. <laughs> Rounding the Horn of Africa is the closest I've ever come to turbulent Somalia, a country without a functioning government for 20 years. The chaos there is one reason young Somali men become pirates and take to the sea in small boats, despite all the firepower lined up against them. They don't know what a peaceful country is, what a peaceful life is. So it's very difficult to, to them to realize what is legal and what is illegal. Right. Um, this, is, this is a way of life for them now. Yeah, it's a way of life. Yeah, they don't know any other way of life. Not far from here, the French flagship of the European force reports some suspicious activity, possibly a pirate camp getting ready for action. It happens just as the Libeccio is taking up its own position in the area. The, the command of the task force ordered us to, to go there in the vicinity of this possible pirate camp to monitor the situation and to adopt a covert posture. We will be there just waiting for them to come out and to, to stop them and 
eventually disrupt them. By staying just over the horizon, Commander Galiuto hopes to remain out of sight. But he still sends a chopper to gather some intel about what's called a pirate attack group. How many people did you see? Was, it, was there a lot of activity? Not too much activity uh, on the land, but uh, a little bit of activity in between the skiffs. Uh, we saw lot, lots of skiffs moving uh, from uh, one camp to the other camp, uh, and uh, another going uh, outside, farther away. It was enough activity to warrant a rare second flight, a night flight in an attempt to find out what's going on. While we wait to hear from the helicopter pilots, Ricardo and Dario, the commander explains why he's so concerned about what he sees here. When fishermen go at sea and prepare their activity, they normally use nets and they just put these nets on, on, on the beach. But there's nothing here that you can correlate with fishing activity. On the other hand, there's nothing that we can necessarily correlate with piracy activities such as weapons or things like that. So it, it's just si something that we simply consider suspicious. Right. Need to take a, a closer look. A closer look. Comparing images taken days apart, the question is, what has happened to a yellow skiff? They're calling it skiff number three. Anything to report? Roger. Okay. Still in investigating. It's disappeared and there's a possibility it's now out to sea on a pirate attack. Roger, copy, no suspect uh, skiff. It's just not clear, but what's clear to me is that the plan to fly over a suspected pirate camp at night has raised the temperature on board the Lebeccio. It's challenging sometimes because reality is never black or white. The people were all around New York. After their someone return, the pilots someone. briefed Commander Galeuto on what they saw someone and what they somebody. didn't. Yes, there were just one skiff, but we didn't find this. The next day, the bridge jumps to alert. A boat has been spotted nearby. It's a dhow towing three small skiffs. Could one of them be skiff number three? Even as suspicions run high, the goal is not to raise the tension. So what we are trying to, to do is now is to establish com communications with, uh, with this doubt and carry out a, what we call a friendly approach. Friendly approach. It is assessed to be a friendly approach just because the behavior is not suspect. But we don't know who are the people on board that fishing door or whatever small boat is. So what we, call, we call it a friendly approach just because we don't have a non-friendly posture. So the team you send out first, even on a friendly approach, is ready for anything? Yeah, definitely. It has to be. The crew quickly springs into action. The Marines head out to the Dow. Everyone else monitors the situation. From the COC to the weapons control room. The assessment is that this is not a pirate group. They're just fishermen, a Somali crew sailing under a Yemeni flag. This yellow skiff is not the missing skiff, number three. When you see a Dow with three skiffs, that's enough to make you need to go check it out. That's enough to, to go at least and to try to, to intercept it. Mm -hmm. And as soon as they saw our ship, which was closing distances with them. They stopped their movement and understood. They invited us on board to make a, a friendly inspection and to, to talk with them freely. And they told us that they have weapons on board just to defend themselves. Just protect themselves right? It would be normal for anyone here to have some weapons on board to protect themselves. Yeah, especially if they know about the piracy threat. After the boarding team does a thorough survey, they give the fishing crew some food and water, wish them luck, and send them on their way. 
but encounters at sea don't always go this smoothly. Shortly after an attack on a nearby merchant vessel, the Lebeccio was ordered to check out a large dhow towing three smaller boats. Our kilo was airborne and started to trying to establish communication with the, with the crew of this dhow, telling them to stop their movement. When the Dow refused to comply, the operation quickly became what's called a harassment. The Lebeccio closed in and shadowed the suspect's ship overnight. Eventually, the choppers began firing warning shots, sending a message. We want you to stop, and we will stay here until you stop. It wasn't until the next morning that the crew of the Dow finally got on the radio. And they said, we surrender, we surrender. When the Lebeccio's boarding team arrived, Ten Somali pirates gave up control of the Dow and their hostages, 15 Pakistani crew members and the Iranian captain. The Somali pirates were put into temporary jail cells, a brig that the Lebeccio's crew built in the helicopter hangar. Okay. Still, even catching pirates red-handed does not make it easy to prosecute them. A special court in Kenya set up to handle pirate cases is completely overwhelmed. So in the end, the only thing we could do is to release them ashore, and that is what we have done. After almost 10 days of detention on board, we took them ashore. And there's every reason to believe that as soon as they were back on shore, these men were figuring out their next pirate mission. Ultimately, a frustrating outcome to a successful operation. Although this is one of the busiest shipping corridors on the planet, it is so vast that it often seems empty, a daunting reality for the Lebeccio and the other warships here to fight piracy. How large is sort of the whole Somali Basin, Arabian Sea, Gulf of Aden area that this group covers? I mean, so it's two million square nautical miles. You can compare it to the entire Mediterranean Sea. It's as big as the whole Mediterranean? Yeah. But the area is so big, I mean, there's, there's always going to be some opportunity for piracy. I mean, the navies can't be everywhere at once. Yeah, definitely, you're right. And this is something they, they know. This is what we consider the uh, center of gravity, the freedom of movement. Mm -hmm. During my time at sea, there have been 35 pirate incidents in the area. 17 attacks and one successful hijacking. As we sail into the port of Djibouti, I get ready to disembark after my voyage. Two weeks of watching this crew's dedication and focus. Is it exciting? It is. It has to be. It's, it's our mission. I mean, it has to be excited. If you're not excited, it means that you don't like what you do. The Lebeccio and her crew will soon end their four-month tour of duty along the East African coast. And as they eagerly prepare to head home, they say they do so with a sense of satisfaction. Is it hard for them to be away for so long, even on a mission that they feel is important and, and valuable? There's always a struggle within you about your sacrifices, the fact that you're far away from home, from your relatives and things like that. There's a sort of mixed emotions. So of, co of course we are proud that we have accomplished our missions. And this is something that belongs to us. I think we, we can go back home much more rich, much more uh, uh, proud, but at the same time, well, we want to go back home. <laughs>